Okay, uh, welcome everyone to Zach seminar. It's my uh, big, very big pleasure to introduce Carolina Araujo from uh, Rio, Brazil, and uh, Carolina will speak about her joint research with Alessio Corti and uh, her PhD student, I think, Bereshel, on the Bereshel geometry of Calabi Yau pairs with the application to three-dimensional Cremona transformations. Thank you, Vanya, for the invitation. Thank all the organizers for organizing the Zag seminar and inviting me to give a talk here. Um, so let me... Okay, so let me just start by saying that this is a joint work with Alessio Corti and Alex Massarenti, who was not my PhD student. And, um, and just uh, so that I don't forget, let me just say now that this, we are always working over the complex numbers. Okay, so um, let me start with a motivation that comes from the study of automorphisms of K3 surface. So first, let's discuss automorphism of smooth hypersurfaces in general. So if you start with X, a smooth hypersurface of degree D in Pn plus one, and you are interested in understanding the automorphisms of this hypersurface, then it's good to know this, uh, this nice theorem by uh, Matsumura and Monsky from 1964 that says that the automorphism of the automorphisms of such hypersurface, they are always induced by automorphism of the ambient space, except in two cases. The case of uh, a curve of degree three, so an elliptic curve in a plane, plane, cubic plane curve, and a quartic hypersurface in P3. So that is a smooth uh, K3 surface. So, um, so the exceptional cases, again, is, is just this elliptic curve in P2. And in this case, we understand very well the, the automorphism group of this object and the case of a quartic surface in P3. So this is a K3 surface. And in general, uh, the automorphism group is always discrete. And, and there are examples where it is finite, but there are also examples where it is infinite and has a very intricate uh, structure. Okay, so in this case, uh, in both cases, the, the subgroup given by a projective automorphism is always finite. And so one may ask, so where, so if this, if this, where do the other automorphism come from? So let's look at this first for, uh, for an elliptic curve. So for an elliptic curve, this is very well understood. So we know the, um, the automorphism group of an elliptic curve. And, and also we know that every automorphism of C is induced by a Cremona transformation of the ambient P2. So I do not know uh, who to attribute this theorem. So if someone knows the original, um, uh, the, the original reference, I would be very happy to learn. This seems to be sort of a folklore uh, result and uh, you, can, you can find a proof of it in a, in, in a paper by Ogizo, which I will mention later on. Um, so in this case, we have an exact sequence. So we have the group of Cremona transformations of the plane that stabilized the cubic. So this is um, classically called the the decomposition group of the cubic, and that surjects uh, into the automor onto the automorphism group of the curve. And let's denote the kernel by G, so this is classically known as the inertia group of the curve. And uh, so we have Pan in 2007 gives uh, generators for this decomposition group, and later Blanc give uh, also generators for the inertia group. So this, in this case, things are very well understood. So now let's look at the case of K3 surfaces. So now uh, there is this question uh, by uh, Giza Tulin that asks if every automorphism of S is induced by a Cremona transformation of the ambient space. So a few years ago, Ogizo addressed this question and he answered it negatively. Um, so in fact, he provided an, ex an example of a K3 surface with um, 
automorphism loop infinite cyclic, and such that no non-trivial automorphism of S is induced by a Cremona transformation. On the other hand, he produced some other interesting examples. So he, for instance, he produced this example of a uh, surface with um, infinite and sort of complicated enough um, automorphism group. So this is the free product of three copies of Z mod to Z. But still in this example, every automorphism of S is induced by a Cremona transformations, by a Cremona transformation. So now the question is, if you're given a K3 surface, um, what can you say about the automorphisms that come from um, Cremona transformations of the ambient space? So this is the, the problem that we want to consider. We want to describe the group of um, this, this the composition group of the surface, so the group of birational self maps of P3 that stabilize S, and also understand this group homomorphism, the restriction homomorphism. So this, uh, this pair, P3, together with a smooth quartic K3 surface, is an example of a Calabial pair. And in this talk, I would like to discuss some some techniques that one can use to more generally study the birational geometry of Calabial pairs. But before I do so, let me uh, spend some time reviewing some basic uh, theory about the Cremona group. So the Cremona group in dimension N is defined to be the group of birational self maps of PN. Of course, it contains the automorphisms of PN, but this is a much bigger group. So this is a huge group. And let me just give you, remind you, the simplest example of non-biregular uh, Cremona transformation. So this is the standard quadratic transformations in Pichu. And it has this very uh, nice geometry that it, uh, it, is, it is not defined precisely at the coordinate points, and it contracts the coordinate lines to the opposite coordinate point. And it's a, it's an isomorphism elsewhere. And there is this classical uh, beautiful theorem by Nether Castelnovo that says that in, in dimension two, these, these are enough to generate the whole group. So even though the group of birational self maps of P2 is uh, huge, it can be generated by the linear automorphisms together with this uh, unique this one standard quadratic transformation. So I do not want to uh, spend too much time talking about the, the history and about the, the, the history of the, the study of the Cremona group of the plane, but let me just say that this is a long story. And recently we have learned many, um, many important things about this group. But let me just, I just want to mention something that is going to be important for later on. So once, uh, so, so uh, one is always also often interested in understanding special subgroups of the Cremona group. So let me give you an example that is going to be meaningful for us later on. Uh, you can consider this meromorphic volume form on P2. And uh, of course, it has simple poles along the triangle, the three coordinate axes, x, y, z equals zero. So I wrote this in, in, uh, in the form in, a <clears throat> okay, in this way, but you can check that it has simple poles along the x, y, z equals zero. And then one may be uh, interested in understanding the subgroup of the Cremona group of the plane consisting of Cremona transformations that preserve this volume form. And in this case, um, this, this, had been, this has been studied by, by Blanc. And he proves that this, he gave some, some nice set of generators for this group. So there is this first part in, in pink and, and blue, which is the part that preserves the torus. So the, the, the torus itself will act by translation. And then you have this SL2Z that is acting by uh, monomial transformations. And then, uh, so this is the part that preserves the torus. And then if you add one extra Cremona transformation, namely this uh, Cremona transformation of order five, then this is enough to generate the whole group. 
Let me just point out that it is an open problem to generalize this, uh, this description to higher dimensions. So one would like to describe the, the group of birational transformations of PN that preserve this natural volume form um, in the torus. Okay, so now let's move to higher dimensions. And then here, the situation is very different than the two-dimensional case. So in the two-dimensional case, the nether castellanovo uh, theorem uh, gives us a way to factor, a strong way to factorize a strong factorization um, a structure for, the, for this group of birational of Cremona transformations. While in higher dimensions, there is no hope to have something similar to the nether castellanovo theorem. And this was uh, long for a long time. So this was proved uh, by Ilda Hudson in 1927, that starting in dimension three, the Cremona group cannot be generated by elements of bounded degree. And so, and, and at this moment, there is no a nice, known, nice set of generators that you could use to, to study this group. However, we have a sort of weak factorization theorem. So this is provided by the Sarkisov program. So this was proved by Corti for threefolds and, and generalized to higher dimensions by Hakon McKernan. And I will, I will discuss more about, I will explain the Sarkisov program later on in this talk, but for the moment, let me just say that this is a weak factorization theorem, uh, but, it with, but it is a very, very powerful tool to, to study the Cremona group. So to illustrate this, let me just um, mention a very nice recent theorem by Blanc, Lamy, and Zimmerman from 2019. They pr prove that for a, they can construct for any n greater or equal than three, several quotients of the Cremona group onto the cyclic group of order two, in particular showing it that it is not, um, that this is not a simple group. Um, and their proof is, it, it's really a very deep understanding of the Sarkisov factorization uh, in, for, for PN. So we are going to come back to that later. So now let's uh, introduce the uh, Calabia pairs, which is our, which are our main uh, objects of study. So this is uh, this is a definition for this talk. There are there are different notions of Calabia pair in the literature, but this is what is rele relevant for us today. So this is a pair X D consisting of a terminal projective variety X, a anticanonical hypersurface D such that the pair XD is log canonical. And for instance, uh, we can, D could be a hypersurface of degree N plus one in PN with some restrictions on the singularities. And let me just remark that once, whenever you have a Calabia pair, there is a unique up to scaling meromorph is a non-vanishing meromorphic volume form on X that has a simple pole uh, along D. So this uh, the divisor associated to this form is precisely minus D. And now the problem that we are interested in is to given a Calabia pair XD to determine the subgroup, the group of birational transformations of X that preserve the volume form omega d. So this is, uh, this is the problem that we are interested in. So for instance, uh, one special case of this problem is the generalization of Blanc's theorem uh, to higher dimensions. So in this case here, the hypersurface d is just the union of the coordinate hypersurfaces. But also, Another example, another instance of this problem is pr precisely the problem proposed, the question asked by Gizatulin Gizo, which is given a smooth K3 surface. Well, so first we were interested in understanding the Cremona transformations that stabilize the K3 surface D, but it turns out that in this case, this, is, this condition is the same as asking that the the Cremona transformation preserves the uh, meromorphic volume form associated to D. 
and this is uh, this is a more general result that we proved that um, it's not difficult to see that if the pair XD has canonical singularities, then the same is true. The group of birational transformations that preserve the form is uh, the same as the group of birational transformation that stabilize the hypersurface. And in this case, we have a restriction homomorphism from this group this group of birational self maps of the pair to the group of birational self maps of the hypersurface V given by restriction. And this is just an example to illustrate that the canonicity assumption is indeed uh, necessary. So I recall the, the, the standard Cremona transformation. So this, it, this uh, preserves the volume form, the X over x wedge dy over y, but uh, of course it is not birational on in any component of, of d. Okay, so now we go back to our problem and I would like to state our first result. So the first, our first result says that if the singularities of the pair are very mild, so this is a uh, what we mean by XD is terminal, so this is not a standard uh, definition, but um, you can think of this as um, asking that, say, a prototype is X smooth and D terminal hypersurface. So if the pair is terminal and both X and, and D have uh, Picard rank one and have the same generator, then the group of birational self maps of the pair coincides with the group of automorphisms of the pair. So you don't get any interesting um, Cremon, uh, uh, birational self map in this way. So for instance, as a corollary, we see that if you uh, take a very general hypersurface of degree n plus one in Pn, then the group of the, the composition group of D, the, the group of Cremona transformations that stabilize D, is just coincides with the group of automorphism of the pair. So therefore, if you want to use this to construct interesting subgroups of the Cremona group, then you have to look for special hypersurfaces D. And in the case that Ogizo considered, so the examples that he constructed, uh, were of K3 surfaces with higher Picard rank. Uh, but one can also uh, consider a different uh, special case, which is the case when D has admits some uh, worse than terminal singularities. And this is what we have been looking at. So we started to allow uh, D to have increasingly worse uh, singularities. And then we actually noticed that the birational geometry of the pair uh, gets richer and richer. And so this is what I would like to illustrate in our next uh, result. So this is theorem B. So the first case to consider allowing worse than terminal singularity is this one. So you take a general quartic surface with one singular point. And in this case, we are able to completely describe the group of birational self maps of the pair. We show that it is a semi-direct product of a group G with a Z mod 2Z. And this group G is a form of GM over the function field of the plane. So that means that after, uh, so this is an algebraic group over this function field, such that after some, um, some, some, finite, some finite base change, it becomes uh, isomorphic to GM. Uh, finite base change in the, uh, yes, on, on P2. So we will see why this appears soon. <clears throat> but actually our, our tools, they allow us not only to give a description, a qualitative description of this group, but I would like to emphasize that we can actually write down all the elements in this group. So to do so, let me just uh, write an explicit, more or less explicit equation. So we, uh, we can make ch coordinate changes so that the equation of our general quartic surface looks like this. Um, so the singular point is a lo locally looks like the, uh, the vertex of a quadric cone. So this quadric cone is precisely the tangent cone to D at the singular point. And 
A, B, and C are homogeneous polynomials of degree two, three, and four. So if, if I'm given this, uh, well, if I'm given general such polynomials, then I can write down all the elements of G. So the Cremona transformations uh, in the subgroup G, they can be written down by these expressions. And similarly, we can write down the expressions for all the Cremona transformations uh, in the other closet. Okay, so let me start um, explaining, um, given the first uh, glimpse into the proof of this theorem. So the first thing that we we will have to consider is a desingularization of the surface D. So we do this by blowing up the point P. So if we blow up the point P, we get a smooth K3 surface D tilde, and that leaves inside the blow up of P3 at the point. And as such, X has a structure of P1 bundle over P1, and when you restrict this P1 vibration to D tilde, you get a two to one map and, and therefore an involution tau associated to it. So this involution is actually very easy to describe from the equation. So if you give me a point with coordinates x1, x2, x3, I just do, use this equation to solve for x naught. So in general, I will have uh, two solutions and the involution tau uh, exchanges these solutions. So in this case, um, we want to understand the restriction, of the group of birational self maps that preserve D and the restriction to the, bi the gr birational group of D. In this case, it's, uh, it's easy to show that the birational group of D is the same as the automorphism group of it, the resolution, which is a cyclic group of order two generated by this involution tau. And moreover, we can explicitly construct an element that is mapped to, to tau. So this, this, uh, this map is, uh, this, Cremona trans this Cremona transformation can be shown to preserve the hypersurface and to induce tau on, on D. But it's more than that. So if you compute, you, you check that this is an involution and therefore we actually get a uh, splitting of this, uh, of this sequence. And this is what gives this, this group, this structure of a um, semi-direct product. And now let's try to understand um, the, um, the, the kernel, sorry, this kernel G. And for that, so this is the key point of the proof so in order to understand the G, we will have to show that any birational map of the pair Psi fits in a commutative diagram like this. So X is the blow up of P3 at the point. So of course, any, any birational self map of P3 will lift to a birational self map of X, but here we require more. We require that this lift preserves the vibration to P2. So in other words, what I'm saying here is that we have to prove that any birational map of the pair send, sends lines through P to lines through P. So this is a Dejonquier um, transformation. Now, once we know this, then G can be identified with the group of birational self maps of X over P2 that fix the hypersurface D tilde pointwise. Now, this hypersurface D tilde maps two to one to P2. And now if we view X as a model of P1 over the function field of P2, then, uh, well, that does not have, uh, the D tilde is a, is a double section, but then after we make a base change by D tilde, what we get is a P1 with two sections. And what we want to understand is the group of birational maps of this P1 that fix these two sections. So that is precisely a form of GM over the function field of P2. Okay, so now it remains 
to prove this key point. And for that, um, I would like to now discuss the Sarkisov program. So this is a program for factorizing birational maps of PN. And so this is what it says. So any birational map of PN can be factorized as a composition of some elementary links between some varieties Xi. And the reason why this is a weak factorization theorem is because these intermediate varieties Xi uh, may not be PN itself. So what they are in general are Mori fiber spaces. And, the, and then the, uh, the maps are called um, elementary links. So let me tell you what they are. So this is the definition of a Mori fiber space. So this is a vibration where X has terminal singularities. The relative Picard, num Picard uh, number is one. And the anticanonical of X is F ample. So these are precisely the possible outputs of the minimal model program when you run it to a rational variety. So these are the, the more fiber spaces. And so in fact, in this, in this diagram, I should not write Xi, but actually each one of these Xi uh, comes with a, uh, with a vibration. So this is about uh, the more fiber spaces. So let me describe what the elementary links are. So let me first explain this in a sort of vague way. So as I said, the Mori fiber spaces, these Mori fiber spaces are the outputs of the MMP. When you run the MMP, at each step you, you, can make, you make choices. And the idea to define the elementary links is as follows. So we are, you have the Mori fiber spaces, which is the end product. So we take one step back in the minimal model program and then make a different choice from there. Um, but this is done in such a way that once you, you take a, a step back, uh, there is only one different way uh, to go. So this is uh, more or less what the, what the um, elementary links, how they are defined. To make it a little bit more precise, let me discuss these notions in the surface case. So in the surface case, the Mori fiber spaces are just P2 fibered over a point, and the here's a brute surfaces uh, with, with, it, with their structural morphism onto P1. So in particular, well, F0 is P1 cross P1, F, F1 is the blow up of P2 at the point. And what are the elementary links? There are four types of elementary links. So the first one is you have P2 fibered over a point, and then you blow up a point in P2, and then you get P1, uh, F1, uh, fibered over P1. So this is the first, the type one. The type two is when you, this uh, is, is called the elementary, classically called the elementary transformation. You start with the FM and then you, you blow up one point and contract the strict transform of the fiber. I will have a picture later on to, to uh, explain this. Uh, the type three is just the inverse of type one. So you start with the blow up and then contract the minus one curve to go back to P2. And the type four is, um, is just, so F, F naught has choose, choose F P1 bundle structure. So this is type four consists of uh, exchanging the vibration that you are considering. And I have a picture here for the type two. So in the type two, um, you start with a, a P1 bundle, then an F1, FM, and then you, you blow up a point. If you blow up a point that is not in the minimal section, then you, and when you contract the strict transform of the line through P, then you get to um, F M minus one. While if you start by blowing up a point in the minimal section, then uh, you end up with F M plus one. So these are the links in the two dimensional case. I do not want to define precisely the elementary links in higher dimensions, but let me just say that they are, there are again four types and they are generalizations of the links in the surface case. So for instance, the type one, uh, for, for surface that it was just a blow up of a point in P2. In higher dimensions, you would start with a um, Mori fiber space X to S. 
then this F would be an, a divisorial extraction. But the Z that you obtain by doing this extraction may not admit a, um, the other contraction may not be a um, Mori vibration, may not give a Mori vibration. So you may have to perform a bunch of uh, flips, flops, and inverse flips. So this is denoted by uh, phi until you actually get a uh, Mori fiber space X prime to S prime. So the other types can be described in a in a similar way. And uh, okay, so this was for, in general, for Cremona transformations of Pn. But we are interested in, trans in, in birational transformations of, uh, of Calabia pairs. So here I just uh, reviewed the, the definition. And, and now we will need a notion, what, what is the morphism in this category of Calabia pairs? So if you have two Calabia pairs, x dx and y dy, um, and you have a birational map between the, the ambient varieties from X to Y, then it induces an identification in the space of meromorphic forms on X and Y, meromorphic volume forms. So then we say that the birational map F is volume preserving if the volume forms associated to dx and the dy are mapped to each other under this identification. So this is the notion of uh, volume preserving. And the important thing, thing here is that we have a valuative interpretation for this, uh, for, for this notion. And this notion is equivalent to saying the following. So if you have a, this birational map from x to y and you take uh, say a smooth resolution W, then uh, the map is volume preserving if and only if for every divisor on, on, on W, for, for every such W, then the uh, discrepancies coincide. So this, this interpretation um, allow us to use uh, the tools from the minimal model program. And in particular, for instance, we have a volume preserving version of the Sarkisov program. So this was proved by Corti and Carlo Giros in 2016. And it says that a volume preserving birational map between Mori fiber Calabia pairs is a composition of volume preserving Sarkisov links. So what does that mean? So that means that uh, we have a decomposition of our given map psi as before. So by elementary links, but for every variety that appears in this decomposition, one can naturally associate to it an anti-canonical divisor, di, that makes this pair um, a, um, a Calabia pair. And, and so this is actually a very strong condition. So for people that um, have worked with the Sarkisov program, they know that, that it's uh, Sarkisov links are very special. So for instance, and together with this volume preserving condition, this is a very restrictive uh, situation. So for instance, let me just uh, give you an example. So this is an easy exercise that you can do. So in the case where you have a smooth hypersurface of degree n plus one in Pn, and F is just a smooth blow up, then uh, it's very rare that F is volume preserving. So this is the case. So F um, now from, from X D tilde to P N D is a volume preserved blow up. Uh, for that to happen, then we must have that the center of the blow up is contained in the hypersurface and it has co-dimension two in Pn, so that in other words, this has to be a hypersurface of D. So, um, so the first step in the Sarkisov factorization would have to be the blow up of such, uh, of such hypersurface in D. Okay, so having said that, I can quickly explain to you how we prove theorem A. So if, um, 
So if n is at least three, so I just, I just I'm just restating actually a corollary of the of our original theorem a just for simplicity, but the proof is the same. So if n is at least three and b is a very general hypersurface of degree d n, then the group of irrational self maps of the pair is just the group of automorphisms of the pair. So what I mean by very general here is uh, the conditions that I need is that D is smooth and the Picard group is generated by a hyperplane section. So let's see what we can do in this case. So we know that uh, any, so any birational map psi of the pair We'll have to factor, have, we'll have to admit a Sarkiso, volume preserving Sarkiso factorization like this. And because of my previous example, uh, we know that the first step, or actually we can show that the first step will have to be the blow up of a co dimension two sub variety of Pn that is contained in D. But our condition on the Picard group actually imply that such this, this subvariety will have to be a complete intersection of D with a hypersurface of Pn. And in this case, we can write down explicitly what the Sarkisov link would be. And then when you compute what it what it does, you know, what is the end, what is the end of the link x1 d1, you check that x1 has worse than terminal singularity. So this there can there cannot be such a factorization. And this is why you cannot have a non-biregular uh, birational self-map of the, of the pair. OK, and uh, now let me explain to you the proof of theorem B. So again, in this case, we took a general quartic hypersurface having one singular point. And here, we analyze a, the possible Sarkiso factorizations of, uh, of an element in this, uh, in this birational group. So we are given psi, and then, and then what, what the first thing we prove is that the Sarkiso factorization must start with the blow up of the singular point. So this is the only possible um, first Sarkiso link in this case. And so we get to X, the blow up of P3 at the point with the D tilde, which is a, um, a resolution of D with a P1 uh, morphism or P1 bundle structure to P2. Then we analyze the next link. So we have to understand, we understand this K3 surface D tilde very well so that we know, you know the, what are the curves in the surface and so on. And then we analyze what are the, what is the, what are the possible um, what is the possible next link? And we show that the only links that you can get is the, are the links of type two. So in this case, this corresponds to uh, blowing up a curve in the tilde and then blow down this, the, the strict transform of the, of the cylinder over this curve. And so after a few such links, we must get back to our pair x the tilde, and then the next link must have to be the, just the blow down of uh, to p3. So we actually so we show that all the circuits of the circuits all the, the possible circuits of factorizations are these ones, and and now I notice that this uh, this diagram this this was exactly the key point that I had in golden in uh, a few slides back. Okay, so this is the idea of the proof of theorem D. So it really um, consisted in understanding all the possible Sarkis of links uh, for, for such pairs. And now let me discuss um, let me discuss another notion that is very important for this uh, for this. So let me just go back one slide so that I can show this. Uh, so this, as you can see, in in theorem A and in theorem B. Um, we needed to understand what are the possible Mori fiber spaces that can appear in, in such a decomposition. So this, um, so this is very useful in general, and this has a, has a name. So this is the pliability of a Mori fiber calabial pair. So this is just the set of Mori fiber calabial pairs that admit a volume preserving birational map to XD. 
modulus some natural equivalence that, uh, that one considers in this situation. And so from the point of view of pliability, when we prove theorem A and theorem B, we showed in theorem A, we showed in particular that the pli pliability of such a pair, um, it consists of just one element, the, X, the pair XD itself. And in theorem B, we showed that uh, the pliability of the pair uh, was just, uh, there, there were, consists of two elements, the original pair P3D, the blow up together with the strict transform of, uh, of D, and, and that's it. And now I would like to state a third theorem. So we, as I said, we started to, cons to allow the singularities of D to get uh, worse. So we also consider the case of a general quartic hypersurface with one A2 singularity. And in this case, we determine the pliability of the pair. So as in, the, in, as in theorem B, of course, we always have the P3 with, um, uh, with the original pair, uh, the blow up of P3 together with the strict transform of, of the teal of D and the P1 bundle to P2. But also, um, we, can, we also found some um, non-equivalent pairs of the form, uh, the weighted projective space P1112 together with a quintic uh, hypersurface. So there were two quintic hyper, non-isomorphic quintic hypersurfaces uh, that one can get in, in this way. And also, uh, surprisingly, we also find two infinite families of um, of models. So we found a three parameter family of, uh, of pairs of the form. Well, X4 is a, it's a hypersurface in a weighted projective space and, and D is just the complete intersection of X4 with a, with a cubic. And a six parameter family of um, pairs of the form, a hypersurface in this weighted projective space together with a uh, complete intersection of X4 with a, a quadrat. Okay, so um, this is all I wanted to tell you today. So thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Carolina. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, questions? Okay. Let's uh, come up here. So, Karina, I have a question, uh, yes. which I probably already asked you uh, privately, so like uh, in, in general. Uh, so, uh, if you like, what's the further plan for for this research? Do you plan to consider the case uh, for all possible K three or K three with uh, Picard group Z plus Z, or something like this, or singular ones like? Oh, okay. So maybe. Okay, maybe what I want to say is that this is this is a general framework. So this, mm -hmm. if you want to study, for instance, the original question by Gizatul and Ugizo, this the same the same tools will apply. So in this case, if if you have a quartic surface, and uh, a, a, a smooth quartic surface, possibly with, with of course with with higher PK rank, and you want to to understand its uh, its its birational group. The rational group of the pair, then you know that any Sarkisov factorization will have to start with the blow up of a curve contained in the surface. Mm -hmm. But then once you know this, um, so how can I say this? So if the surface is, if this curve has very high degree, then automatically again, you get to a bad link. Mm -hmm. And so of course, we still do not know one interesting thing with with to sort of to really write down what, what are uh, the conditions that you what what curves are what kind what type of curves do you 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 need so I don't think there is a at this moment there is not a complete list but this does but the interesting thing is that this does not give us the answer in the other direction of course you would like to have uh, sufficient conditions for the restriction map to be surjected mm -hmm. and. Um, and that I do not know how to, I do not know yet uh, how, how one could 
get sufficient conditions using this tool. So I think in his paper, Ogizo asks a, a very interesting question. So he asks whether is it true that at least every automorphism of finite order Mm -hmm. is induced by Cremona transformation. So, um, so I don't know, it's, I don't know, we, we, we worked out many examples and many explicit uh, Sarkiso factorizations, but uh, I think we are just, I think there, there are so many things to do now. You could also work um, in some other but, empty spaces, but this is, uh, yes, go ahead. But in your examples, uh, most of your examples has P3, it's an ambient space. Yes, yes, except for the, the, the mild one, so that is for any, for any dimension, but for the explicit examples, we only looked at the partic hypersurfaces in P3. In P3 yeah. Because, yes. for example, it's clear that uh, probably you need, uh, for ex to get some explicit result, you need probably FANA to have PCAR group uh, Z, yeah, or something like this. Uh, but uh, also possible to consider like uh, other fun of with Picard groups. Yeah. And yes, which, yes, yes, uh, of course, yes. And that, okay, and that raises another question. Well, maybe, um, maybe, well, we, we know examples where the, the, the automorphisms of the K3 surface are not induced by the Cremona of the P3, but is there another embedding of this surface in another, say, of funnel with Picard number one for which you can construct these birational maps. So this uh, sort of was, opens was, the room uh, to other possibilities yeah, for good question. Yeah, yeah. Good the question. origin of this uh, of these automorphism groups. And uh, regarding the, your be, remark in the beginning of the talk about uh, elliptic curve in P2, uh, this is folklore. It's basically a question uh, asked uh, in undergraduate courses very often. So I was asked this question a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, it should be in some book. Maybe it's in, I don't know, maybe it's in Dolgachev book on classical. It should be somewhere. Yeah, I could not. I mean, I just, uh, couldn't the find only, it. yes, I couldn't find it. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other questions to Carolina? Please ask. Mm -hmm. Hi, Alicia. Hi, Ragni. Hi, Ana Maria. Good to see you. I have just a naive question. So, like, for example, the kind of the opposite question, uh, the opposite case of uh, um, was studied like a quartic surface uh, uh, that has many singularities. Um, uh, and like, for example, uh, if you blow up P3 along uh, uh, six points uh, and then six lines, uh, sorry, and then all the lines passing the span by them, then the anti-canonical linear system has exactly one section. It's one of these. Um, so my, my uh, former students start, uh, studied this thing. And I think there are two, the, there are, um, um, there are automorphisms which are not induced by the Cremona, I think. But so what would be the first step, let's say, if you want to attack that from this point of view? Like which okay, kind so, of curve would I... Yeah, so let me, let me discuss the A2 case. Okay, so the A2, for the, so for the A1, the case of A1 singularity, the first step must be the blow up of the point. But all right, okay, so if you have two singularities, then of course you can blow up one or the other. So you have much more... Um, uh, much more complexity. But if you, if you start with a A2 singularity, now you can do the blow up at the point, but you can also do a weighted blow up of weights uh, one, one, two. And so that leads, to, that leads to many more models. So I think the more, okay, my intuition tells me that, okay, the, the more you increase the Picard rank or the more you make this surface singular, you have more room for a volume preserving Sarkis of links. And then you have to follow all of them. Well, we did follow all of them to, to check where they lead. And, but I would say that, that if the singularity, if you have many singularities, then, you, it, then that may be a very hard problem. I mean, many already in, in, in our theorem C, we had many cases to consider and each case is a sort of a very careful um, analysis of the possible circuits of links. So I'll, I'll be happy to, to, you know, if you, if you have an explicit uh, equation of a surface, I'll be, I'll be happy to discuss that with you. And then we could try to work out a few circuits of links. 
Hi, Margarita. Good uh, answer. Good question. Okay, thank you. And uh, other questions to Carolina? Okay, if there are no other questions, uh, let's thank Carolina again. Thank you very much. And uh, let me think in uh, Zoom like this. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I, I suggest I finish uh, the session and I see everyone uh, on next Tuesday, on the next uh, Zag, and uh, Karolina will see you on Wednesday. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. -bye, everyone. Bye.